So, Kathleen, we are recording. I do have your permission to record. Yes. Yes. And you will have the option when this is all over as to whether or not others can see it for you know students can learn from it and so on. Yes. That's your choice. But one thing I want to really emphasize here is I don't know really where we're going to go with this session, and I don't know how deep we need to go and all of that. So we might get into issues that that you think are maybe pretty personal, but we need to get into them if we're going to get our result done. We don't want to tiptoe around anything. I'm willing. All right. This is an okay. opportunity of a lifetime here. <laughs> okay. So anyway, we were talking before this recording yep. uh, and you were, in, you were using the term grief having to do with, let's call it family grief. It isn't as though somebody died, but it's sort of like to use your words, it's like your family died. Did you not say that something like that? I did. I, I think what I said was the hope of my family being the family that I want them to be, that they're not, I have to accept that they're not ever going to be that. All right. And so this has manifested itself more recently with family issues where you've been treated coldly and a few things like that. Like, yes. Yes. Yes, um, it has a history um, after my mom passed away in 2015. Um, there was a dispute over the estate. I was actually at the time recovering from a near fatal illness, but my sister and brother uh, went to court. There was mediation and uh, there was a property that needed to be sold that was a commercial property. Um, and it's dragged on for years. And, um, and then um, in 2018, I hired a lawyer because I wanted to move forward and basically emailed both my, my siblings and said, let's be done with this and move forward. And, uh, and so uh, luckily, because I hired an attorney, um, there were two people against one of the three of us. Um, at first, I was in contact with my brother and not speaking to my sister. And then when I realized my brother was not doing what he agreed to do when they went to mediation. I, I, towards selling this property and closing the estate, I um, joined my sister in going back to mediation to uh, with a lawyer and um, successfully sold the property at the end of 2019. I have something in my eye. And lo and behold, there's a pandemic in the beginning of 2020. So we sold that property just in the nick of time um, because, of course, people weren't working. So to be a landlord would have been rather challenging for any of the people <laughs> having properties being landlords during 2020. Um, so it was a blessing. We sold the building, but because of the level of dysfunction of my brother alcoholism dysfunction he did not fulfill as the fiduciary uh he didn't get back to people accountants he wasn't he wasn't following through and there's still this log jam of this property uh or of this estate just closing so to back up, I wasn't in touch with my sister for three years when this all first started in 2016. There was mediation um, and my brother got fiduciary control of this building. And then he wasn't doing his job. My sister and I took him back into mediation and so we reconnected after three years, we kind of had it out with each other and there was a healing, I thought. With your sister. With my sister between us. 
we were talking again. Um, and so with my sister, I never know how thick the ice is when I'm walking on it on the lake, you know, I could fall through and it could be a problem. And just her, you know, her bitterness, her anger. Um, she had taken care of my mom for uh, the last years of her life in her home with help. So there was a lot of bitterness and resentment and I did the best that I could coming back East. Anyway, the point is, is my, my niece is having a ba baby shower now. And this would be the first time of me returning to my sister's house after all of this unrest and family falling apart. Um, and I was already nervous about it, but I wasn't sure how I was going to have the conversation with her about whether or not I'd stay at their house. Um, in the past, it felt like we were close. It's complicated because my sister's the one that saved my life. Well, let me let me let me interject for a moment if I can. Mm -hmm. um, I get the idea that there are currently things going, or there have been things going on with the estate and so on, where there have been differences of opinion and some sparks and some resentments and and so on. Yes, got it, got it. Okay, you are calling that grief. And so, like your family, your family is not the kind of the family has sort of died in that it is not manifesting itself in the way you'd like to have your family be. That is a loss, a form of grief to you. Did I summarize it right? Yes, my family, my siblings, in my opinion, are mentally ill in varying degrees and alcoholic. And there's no, there's actually no talking to them. There's no, there's no capacity to have a grounded adult conversation. Okay. Okay. So let me, let me, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to zero in on something we yes. can really work with for now. We're going to have a, let's, this is the kind of thing that requires several sessions because there've been lots of things going on in, in your lifetime, even prior to the, Right. Recent estate things and all of that. Right. Okay. Right. So it's going to be a let's get a good start. So I want to I yes. want to get succinct if I can here. Now, yeah. your brothers, your brother and sister, your view, mentally ill. OK. Yeah. Alcoholism, lots of communication problems. But we're, we're mostly interested in. Yeah. Isn't isn't what they do, how they behave and right. so on. It's how you respond to it. Okay, yes. so let's let's get specific here if we can. Okay. Okay. Yes. Because it's your response yes. that we can shift, okay? But we need to get, and we can do this with our unseen therapist very elegantly, but we got to get enough material, enough of this stuff succinctly on the table, if we can, before we bring an unseen therapist. So we're going to have a little Right. Conversation here. So um, we like to deal with specific events. That's true whether we're dealing with EFT tapping or the unseen therapist. We do the same in both, right. both ways. Okay. So I'm looking for a specific event somewhere in time where your sister or your brother or somebody did something, behaved in some way or whatever, and you had an emotional crescendo. Oh! You know, some kind of anger, some kind of humiliation, some kind of fear, some kind of grief, some kind of whatever. Can you locate that for me? Yes. Good. What comes, what comes Good. to mind, my response historically has been, and I have a specific event, is to try to please, try to, to take care of everything, and I have a specific event where I flew back from 
uh, California to New Jersey to give my sister and brother-in-law some respite from taking care of my mother. And I literally come off the plane, I take a bus to New Jersey, get into the kitchen, immediately put my apron on, start cooking, start doing chicken soup or whatever it was. And nothing I can do is good enough. My sister just wants to vent her bitterness and her anger and her rage. All right. And I remember the specific moment where I said, she criticized something and I said, well, what difference does it make? There's nothing I can do that's going to make you happy. And she just blasted me and I stood there and, um, with what emotional response? Give me a label. Are you mad? Are you, are you humiliated? Are you what? I'm crushed. I'm feeling sad and I'm feeling like there's nothing I can do. That's going to take, the, I'm, I'm feeling guilty because they're, they're so stressed and I'm feeling sad because no matter what I do, nothing is ever going to make a difference. All right. And, and if I may finish that sentence and always correct me if I'm wrong, cause I only know bits and pieces and I've got to right. sort of guess at some stuff. So you always correct me. So we don't go off in the wrong place. Yes. Right. Um, you're feeling guilty and there's nothing else you can do about it, which means I'm thinking, this guilt is perpetuated. You'll never be able to get out from underneath it. How did I do? Bullseye. Okay. All right. All right. So now let's take a look at your specific event for the moment. All right. And I'm, I'm, I'm going by memory here, but you, okay. you, you arrive, you put on your apron and you're doing some cooking and stuff. And your sister then comes in and somehow criticizes you then you have some response and then she lays into you again and you have another response. Do, do I remember that right? Yeah. Okay. So that is actually more than one specific event. Mm. There's the original criticism in your response. And then there's the, the next piece in your response. Okay. Yes. So we, yes. Yes. Okay. So to be to be, do this well, we want to be as specific as we can, because oftentimes, even though in this case, it seems like there are two specific events back to back. Chances are, if we correct or we do something with one of them, it'll help. It'll help the other. Right. We want to zero in on one of them and do it well. Now, of those two, and we're looking we're looking for your emotional crescendo, you know, you know. Which of those two has the biggest emotional crescendo in them? It's, it's her, it's, it's when she's laying into me about how hard it is for them and that, you know, how dare I Okay. like, all right. That's the second one, the one That's we were hearing, one. the guilt is. It's the exactly. second okay. one. Okay, now, what I want to do there, and we're trying to get specific, okay? It isn't just that she laid into you. Yes, I mean, that's, yes, okay. But to be more specific, she said something or did something or there was a gesture or something and you went, Wah! with that statement. Can you zero in on that? I'm trying to remember. I mean, all I remember is her saying, fuck you. Um, all right, wait a minute. Stop, I stop right there. I can, I, I'm just looking at your face. And with the mere, that mere phrase, I see a little mm, going on. Am I not? Yeah, yeah, Am yeah. Not? Oh, yeah, that. That's okay. what it was. Fuck you. Okay, all right. All right, now, give me a label as you think about it now. Okay. Not how it, we're not so interested in how, what it was then, although it may be the same as then. Okay. 
What is your emotional response now? Are you feeling guilty? Are you angry? What are you right at the moment? Angry. Angry. All right. Like, how dare she say that? Or could you be, can you expand some? It's, it's really, uh, it's, it's this, it's so interwoven, the anger and the guilt, because the guilt is, the message consistently has been, your life has been a piece of cake. It's been so easy. And we're the ones, we're the ones taking care of the shit here back, you know, with mom. Yeah. And yeah. so I, I come, I try to, and, and, and I try to be there. And then there's just this dump of negative, like just, you know, dumping stuff. And right. then making me like the bad guy. Like, I, I know I'm not being specific enough. Well, that's, that's okay. No, it's good. It's good. But, but I, I'm going to keep guiding you a little okay. if I can. Okay. Because we're teaching as well as anything else what, what we're doing. Right, okay. right. Okay. So now this specific event has for ideal purposes, a flaw in it mm -hmm. in that it's relative. How long ago was this a few years ago? This is, let's see. Uh, I want to say this is 2000 and it has to be 2013. Okay. Well, it, so that's whatever, how many okay. years? That's seven. The most important point, the most important point is not exactly when it was. Right. But it, the point is it, it wasn't, clear back into childhood where the foundation of all of this likely occurred. Okay. Right. No. When you're very young, you have, you know, sister, brother, blah, 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 blah stuff going on. Right. Even then, and chances are, it's been going on and building. This is the likelihood. You always correct me. Okay. Right. It's been going on and building over time. And here we are now in this a few years ago. Right. Uh, and here it comes with some big crescendo, but it's bouncing off of stuff way in the past. How am I doing? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. All right. So we can deal with this specific event you're now talking about. Okay. Um, where she, you know, lays into you, so to speak. But the chances are, if we bring NC therapist in for that, we may get some results about that, but they will not likely be complete because it's bouncing off of something unresolved a long time ago. Yes. Yes. Okay. So while we can still deal with a specific event and get something done, it would be better if we could do it, Kathleen, to go all the way back to childhood at a, a time with your sister where you can recall, ah, you know, we're not getting along well at all. And she's, she's laying into me and she's all of that. Okay. Can you recall such a time way back in childhood? The further back, the better. Yes. Um, so I was the youngest. There's me, the baby. My sister is the middle child and my brother is the oldest. And, um, My 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 brother, without getting into hold on one second. Brother's brother was the one that um, got beaten up, brutalized. My sister beaten up, brutalized by whom? My father. Okay, who, all right. Who go was ahead. alcoholic, and my sister kind of was a withdrawn, angry teen. And um, I'm just trying to think. Later on in life, my sister, when we had conversations about our family, seemed to feel like my my life was a piece of cake. Yeah. My my life was fine. And. Um, I remember being a young child watching my father beat my brother up and 
and my mother and coming to my mother and saying, you know, this is crazy, do something. And I was young, like maybe seven or eight, nine. And she would say, go, go sweet talk your father. You know, you're the one that you're his favorite. You can, you can calm him down. So that's a big responsibility to put on a young child to like, Mm -hmm. you know, I felt like it was my responsibility to save my family, to, you know, make sure he didn't kill us all. That was, that's, that was the kind of terror that my childhood was watching my brother get beaten up in terms of my sister. There was always a resentful, I couldn't get her approval. Okay. Well, f- for one thing, if I get it right, yeah. at least in her eyes, in her you eyes. are the favorite. She is not. Yeah. Okay. Let's stop right there for the moment. Okay. Okay. This is a bit of, this is a bit of reframing, if you will, since it is your response to your sister. And there's, yeah. I, I think that there's lots of other family responses going on. That's why there's more sessions, et cetera. But we're zeroing in on this one. Okay. Right. Um, <clears throat> let's look at it from your sister's point of view. Okay. As far as she's concerned, whether she's right or wrong, it's still her perception that you are the favored one. She is not, and she doesn't like that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Justified or not. That's what I'm hearing. And so she would be coming from that. You are the favorite one. Okay. She would resent you, whether she should or not. And we can, you know, that we can sit there and debate all these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, that would be where she comes from. Now she also has an alcoholic father who beats people. Okay. Mm-hmm. No doubt also criticizes, including her. Would I be right? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, there was he kind of just focused on my brother. There was no brutalization of me and my sister, but watching that was. Okay. But what I want, yeah, I got it. Yeah. What I want to get to what I want to get to as well yeah. as we can. Yeah. Is where your sister is coming from now, just watching father brutalize brother. Right from your sister's point of view. I don't know what a young child picks up from that because it would be different, but typically it is, ooh, ooh, the world is not safe. Right. Ooh, ooh, my, one of my sources of love being my, supposed sources of love being my father is really somebody pretty brutal. I don't feel very lovable. I feel very afraid. I feel insecure as a result of this. And besides that, my sister, Kathleen is the favorite, not me. What I'm trying to do is. Yeah, I see what you're trying to do. Um, look, look at your sister for the moment. We want to see, we want to know where she's going. We're not going to excuse the behavior. We are trying to understand the behavior. Big difference. It's a little easier if I come forward in time a little bit to a time when my mother was not failing. She was just living with my sister. And I would come back east to, I'm thinking of a specific time to visit. And I hadn't seen friends. So I I wanted to see friends as well as do my family visiting and everything. And my sister was out of her mind, resentful that I was not spending my time with my mother and disapproving and demanding of me, you know, in ways, the words, what I can hear her saying to me is, we're the ones doing all the work here. I mean, the least you can do is spend time with your mother here. That it, to her, it was unfair. Yeah that I would actually spend any time with friends, even though I don't live on the East Coast anymore. Bitterness, anger, resentment of everything heaped on her shoulders. Yeah. And 
okay. you know, my life seemed a lot better than her life. And from her perspective, um, yeah, I came and went as I pleased and she was angry about it. Well, okay. So let, let me get behind that a little bit if I can. Yeah. One of the things I've seen over and over and over and over again, and I suspect is going on here with your sister. Yeah. Is that when we have unrest within ourselves, and we all have it to one degree or another, you, you can't live in this world without <laughs> having some of that, okay? We have unrest within ourselves. And I'm speaking of your sister for the moment. Okay? Unrest, insecurities, a father, alcoholic, and things we've talked about, and so on. My sister's the favorite, I'm not, and all this other stuff. We get unrest within ourselves. What we tend to do, rather than go inside and resolve things, which we most of us don't know how to do, no is we will tend to project it out. We will blame out there, blame some, blame the world, blame my sister, blame the uh, the blame blame. It's a way of seemingly, temporarily projecting it out and getting rid of it, but you don't really get rid of it because it's still there. It shows up tomorrow. Okay. And I've, I've seen this so often, I'm suspicioning this is what your sister is doing. Uh, am I on target? Oh, you're totally on target. Um, another thing flashed from young life. When I was, I don't know, I guess my sister was an early teen and I was, what, nine or ten? She tried to commit suicide by drinking a tumbler of vodka. And I remember watching... TV in the TV room and my parents were out and they came home and the door of the bedroom was locked and my mother was knocking on the door and there was a way to unlock the door with, you know, a kitchen spoon. And as we came into the bedroom, she was beginning to vomit on the bed and she was completely incoherent my sister was very depressed when she was a young child or a young person right. and i remember running down the hall and getting towels and bringing them back and then calling the ambulance and calling my cousin who was the doctor that we saw and this period of time was a very intense time because she went off to the hospital and then nothing was ever talked about that. But then a few days later, it came out that my brother got diagnosed with cancer, which later on found out that that was a misdiagnosis. They switched his slides with someone else's, but there was this two part drama with my sister committing almost committing you know committing suicide and my brother being diagnosed and uh just i don't know what's coming up for me is this guilt that um I just felt this responsibility with my family growing up, you know, of trying to be, you know, the good little girl to like appease my father so he doesn't kill us all and kill my brother, trying to make friends with my sister because I had no allies and Somehow, I don't know, I had this spirit that just, like I'm the only one of my siblings that got into recovery and into therapy and found the EFT and was in a lot of pain, you know, in my young adult life. All right. And tried to share that with them, but like you said, you know, you you're the one that needs to face that within ourselves. And if we don't face it within ourselves, we end up projecting it out. And 
But what I was pointing out there was that's what your sister was likely doing. Now that's all of that has to do with a form of reframing. What I what I tend to want to do is to talk about an issue first, get a lot of details about it, get as much as we can on the table before we bring in unseen therapists. Now, right. what you what you're just now told me, um, I'm seeing now as an encapsulation of what happened with you and your family. You're the responsible one. You can't really take care of it. There's all these bad things happening. You're feeling guilty about it. You're responsible for it. You're getting blamed. And I can't fix it. And you can't fix it. Can't fix it. Yeah. And, and you it's, and, and it's you, not my job as I've understood as an adult, but that's here. Okay. Academically, you understand. Logically, you understand. You can't fix it. Emotionally, you should. How am I doing? That's it. Okay. All right. And we've been talking about specific events. And in, in, in this case, there are lots of specific events. You've talked about things with your brother and your father, and, and it goes on and on and on and on. Many, yeah. many, many, many specific events. And what I'm trying to do with this beginning session is to get down to one specific event, which is only going to be a beginning on all of this. Okay. Now, we're only going to have so much time here. I know. <laughs> so what I'm what I'm what I'm inclined to do is something a little bit different than I normally do. If we were to have you know ongoing sessions, I'd probably start with a specific event and we just keep doing some more and, and some more. But I am more inclined at this point, rather than to do a specific event, is to rather bring in unseen therapists in a creative way on the overall picture of I. I'm responsible for everything. I can't fix it. I feel guilty anyway, da, 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 okay? And see if we can't take the edge off of that. That would be, and then we can do specific events or you could do with somebody else specific events later on and start collapsing around that. But I'd like to see if we can't kick the center out of it. So let me, let me do this. Let me, um, I'm gonna have some, I'm a great tester. I love to test things, okay, before yep. and after. So I'm doing a little testing before. And so I'm gonna have you say a, a sentence or two or three or something like that. And what I'd like to have you do with the sentence is say it out loud. It's gonna be a simple little sentence. I'll give it to you, just say it out loud. And then tell me on a scale of zero to 10, how true does it feel to you? I want the emotional response, not how logically true it is okay. are you with me okay yes. here's the first sentence i'm responsible for my family i'm responsible for my family how true does it feel zero to ten I'm getting a three, like my mind is fighting with my emotional, you know, it's like, I, I'm not responsible for them, but yet there is this part of me feeling like it's a three. All right. I will point out to you a few moments ago, you were near tears on it. <laughs> Did I miss it? No. Now, am I responsible for my family now in the present time or, you know, well, I'm asking you in the press. We've done some reframing about it, so it's now it's, it's probably down from what it was because you were you were in tears about, yeah, at least that area. Okay. Um, Certainly, uh, in the past, I would have said a ten. Okay. Uh, just a minute. Yep. I'm frustrated because I can do nothing about it. Oh, I'm frustrated because I can do nothing about it is a 10. Okay, let me ask you about that. That's a 10. It, is there a physical sensation that goes with that, a tightness in the chest or a headache or something? Yeah, I feel that in my chest right here. It's like a knot. Knot, okay. And I, I think it, that is connected to this crazy, you know, 
finishing this estate. Like there's nothing I can do. It's not in my hands. All right. Short of suing the two of them. So I feel trapped. You know, there is, <laughs> I, there's nothing I can do. All right. Now, next sentence. Mm -hmm. I feel guilty about all that. I feel guilty about all that. What's coming is a four or a five. Okay. I suspicion it's higher, but we'll we'll just we'll use those we'll use those numbers as benchmarks, if you will. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you've never done an unseen therapist session, have you? No. Mm -mm. Okay. Well, it's going to be really easy because I'm just going to narrate the whole thing and all you got to do is follow along. How about that? That's great, Gary. <laughs> easy peasy, huh? <laughs> all right. Well, just I'll tell you in advance what I'm going to do. I, unseen therapist is your spiritual healer within. Mm -hmm. It's a non-denominational name for God jesus buddha allah or whatever other spiritual things you might follow okay mm -hmm. it's the ultimate loving essence of the spiritual realm we just call it the unseen therapist so that's what we're going to do okay and so unseen therapist has a lot more understanding than, it, than you and i running around inside of bodies seemingly will ever have Let me step back a second and ask you a question. I don't know what your spiritual leanings are. We had some conversation prior to this recording, and you were saying you were lining up with unseen therapists, not even having read the book yet. So I gather you have a spiritual leaning of some kind? I do. I'm, I'm a big meditator. I have a, a spiritual teacher. Um, okay. And it's, yeah. Okay. So this is very much in alignment with yeah. it. So I want to I want to ask you a question just just so I so I understand well. Yeah. Okay. So if God or whatever you call God was sitting right next to you right there in your home all these issues that we're talking about could God fix them? Absolutely. Okay. But not right. only could God fix them, I know that God is inherent in all of it. Yeah. That okay. In that right. there's only one. Okay. In essence, what we're going to do is bring in God. We're calling it unseen therapist, but we're going to bring in God for these purposes. Now, that's also while we're sort of teaching here along the same same line. One an important thing about this, and people realize this once they've gotten more into our advanced work and this kind of thing, is that in the spiritual realm, uh, our unseen therapist realm. We have, and nobody, including unseen therapists, is going to take away from us free will to believe as we choose. Right. Okay. So you could have beliefs, even beliefs that are not in your best interest. But unseen therapist is not going to come in and say, oh, no, Kathleen, of that belief you have there, you can't have that one. You've got to have this one. Okay. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Because that would be the thought police, and that is a very unloving thing to do. So, one of the things I'm doing here, and I'm not the one who's going to be doing the healing, it's going to be unseen therapist. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I just want to give you these understandings up front. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm go I am her assistant in this. And so, what we've been doing so far, as you've been telling your story, et cetera, is I have been doing some reframing. Is it really your responsibility? We take a look at from your sister's point of view, a, a few things we've done along these lines to put more things on the table in plain sight. Yes. Meaning we're more willing to let go of them because we now are more aware of them. We might not have been otherwise. They're right. on top of the table, not hidden under the table. Okay. So we've been doing some work along those, along those lines. Yes. So I've tried to loosen up with reframing, being an assistant to unseen therapists, 
so that your free will, you are saying some of these beliefs I'm willing to let go of. I mean, that's what we've been trying to do. Okay. Right. Okay. Anyway, so let's now have our little session. And I don't know what's going to happen because this is kind of advanced stuff in a way. Right. I, I just I just let unseen therapists come in and I just get notions and off we go. All right. So let's just see. Okay. So if you would, just close your eyes and take a nice, deep, relaxing breath. Good. And now as a way of inviting the unseen therapist, shift your focus, or not shift your focus, just recall a loving moment in your life, something really, a dog looking you in the face, whatever. And as soon as you have got this loving moment recalled, just nod your head. All right, good. And with your eyes still closed, I'm going to digress a, a moment because I'm also teaching here at the same time. Many newcomers to this get confused about this recalling a loving moment. They tend to think erroneously that I'm, you know, I've got to do this just right. I, I'm calling on the unseen therapist, God, I, the angels. I mean, I, I've got to have a Hollywood moment. We've got to have harps and angels and spiritual things and warm fuzzies. And I, you know, I've got to feel this really big time and da, da, or it's not going to work. That is not so at all. Okay. The only purpose for recalling a loving moment is simply to do the best you can because neither you nor I are at this ultimate healing love of the unseen therapist. We are borrowing it. And what we're saying with this recalling a loving moment is, ah, we're doing our best to align with you. Unseen therapist is always guiding us. We aren't listening. That's the issue. <laughs> but now we're listening. We're going to put something on the table for her. We're going to romance it a little bit. We're going to see what happens. We'll do some testing later and so on. So with that in mind, we won't be doing necessarily a specific event, but we are going to be looking at your response to things that have happened in the past. You feel guilty about things. You feel responsible about things. You can't fix them. You are frustrated in all of this. And we recognize as we go back and look at your father's behavior, all the alcoholism, we look and we start to recognize, well, alcoholism is there for a reason. We're blotting out things that we really, your father is anyway, really don't want to face. And that's a lot of unrest. And it shows up not only in let's blot it out with alcohol, but in physical beatings, your brother, for example, fears that you would have as a very young child. How do you escape having anything other than fears, insecurity, something's wrong here? Maybe even, although you and I didn't talk about it, things like something's wrong with me. I'm unlovable. I don't count. I'm not good enough. After all, I should have a loving father who doesn't beat people. Maybe something's wrong with me. Oh, but I'm the favored one. But I'm criticized even for that. Right. How can I win? How can I win? I'm a young child. I can't win. As an adult, I might look back at that <laughs> and say, well, that's her. Logically speaking, I know I don't have to buy into that, but I do emotionally anyway because I bought it a long time ago and it has yet to be properly resolved. Yeah. So we look at the father. Then we look at the sister who criticizes you over and over and over again. You are the favorite one. Fuck you and so on and so forth, right? Right. All right. She has her own unrest. And here it comes. And here it comes. And here it comes. Mm. She has to do something with it. Everybody's got to do something with it. We either resolve it within, which very few people do, or we project it without at an easy target. Guess who the target is? That's not to blame. That's not to excuse your sister. 
and her behavior. It is not to excuse your father or his behavior. It is not to excuse anyone and their behavior. It is to understand it. We're not condoning it. We're understanding it. And that's a step towards forgiveness and towards personal peace within you, which is what we really are, are after. Even today, as you get criticisms and sparks with the family and so on, the responses you have today about I can't fix any of this are left over from yesterday. We need to resolve that. You know academically you can't fix it. Just as an aside, in today's world in the United States, there is a lot of political turmoil. And not one person on the planet, you, me, or anybody else, is really going to be able to fix it. Mm -hmm. Okay. There are some who are more influential, but you or I, as a practical matter, are not going to be able to fix it. That doesn't mean we won't have concern about it. Mm -hmm. That's healthy. But we could go over the top about it as you may be doing with unresolved stuff with your family and the grief you may be feeling overall about all the stuff you can't fix. It's very frustrating. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take this frustration. We're going to take this guilt and all these other emotional responses that you have about stuff you can't even control. It's somebody else's stuff that they're doing that they need to do. Okay. And we're going to represent it metaphorically as an unwanted vibration around your heart. Ta-ta, ta-ta, ta-ta. We're not asking you to actually make your heart vibrate. Just in your imagination, metaphorically, we're going to hand this metaphor to the unseen therapist. Ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. She sees that. She understands all of this. Very loving, very quiet, very peaceful. And in your imagination, here comes a breeze from her, a cooling, healing, gentle breeze. It comes from her, enters your body, the same place where all that knot was in your chest, enters your body, surrounds your heart, starts circulating around your vibrate, unwanted vibration around your heart. And of course, all that emotion, all that negativity cannot survive with all that love. You can't mm -hmm. do it. And so it starts to fade. It goes, ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. There goes the frustration. There goes the guilt. I can't fix it. So what? Then we're going to do it again. Here's all that frustration, all that guilt, everything else, vibration around your heart, unwanted. Da -da 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 -da. Here comes the breeze. Ta ta, ta ta, ta ta, ta ta, ta ta. Now, in your mind's eye again, repeat that as often as you want. Another time, two times, whatever you want to do. Just take your time. We have the time until you've gone as far as you think you can go, whatever that may be. There's no grades here. You don't get an A or a C or anything else. You just do what you can do. And whenever you've gone as far as you think you can go, just open your eyes and we'll talk. Take your time. Okay. So 
so tell me, how did you do? Were you able to follow along or did you have a lot of competing thoughts or what? No, I was right there. You were right there. Okay. So what happened in there? Well, my picture was of my teacher, my, my guru, Amma. And, um, just this incredible wave of love of her holding me. She hugs people. She was holding me. And I could, I could see it so vividly when you said and she just blows that energy around my heart and opening my heart. What I saw was before that, I saw this kind of like, it looked like a black ribbon of energy around my heart and then she blew into that this love this unconditional love that just it just kind of melted and then there was pink and gold energy that was around my heart and then it just kept you mentioned it a cup she did it a couple of times just melting this this shell of energy it wasn't hard, but it was, it felt like a shell around my heart. And then the pink and the gold kind of melted into this just white light. And there was just this peace, this, this peace around my heart, this kind of open, spacious peace and stillness. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I want to do a little testing if I can. Sure. Because uh, I'm a great one for testing. Okay. I, I, I'm always I'm always suspicious that nothing really worked because I always want to test and test and test because we're always always looking for what's not done yet. And I'll remind you, this was not a specific event type thing we were doing. It was more of a take the edge off if we can mm -hmm. type, kick the center out of it if we can type session. Okay. But I'll give you these sentences again and tell me on a scale of zero to 10, how true do they feel to you? Okay. I'm responsible for my family. Say it out loud. I'm responsible for my family. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like there's a hook at all now. So it'd be a zero. Zero. It just feels open. Like that's not even real. It's not at all true. Okay. I'm not responsible all for right. that. All right. Next sentence. I'm frustrated because I can't do anything about this. <sighs> Say it out loud. I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated because I can't do anything about this. Well, I don't feel frustrated right now. I don't feel frustrated and I don't feel powerless. And what is coming up for me as I say that to you is, you know, there is legal stuff that has to work itself out, but there's a trust, there's a peace that I feel now around it that I didn't feel before. Okay. It may well be, there's gonna be some irritating things unfolding in front of you. That's how the world works. Right. Okay. But you were a 10 on that to begin with. And now you are a, as far as frustration is concerned. Zero. Okay. I'm a zero. Okay. Um, all right. Ne next sentence. I'm guilty about all of that. I'm guilty about all of that. I'm guilty about all of that. You know what I just saw? That's so interesting. I don't feel that. What I saw at the same time as of noticing that I don't feel that is, and I'm very visual, is just a plug unplugged from the wall. That's what I saw when you said that. Oh, just, okay. All right. Well, all that's good. All that's good. All right. Um, 
I'm writing down zero on that, but it, yeah. uh, am I right? Am I correct? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, let's. I'm playing teacher again for a moment. Okay. I never want to be fooled by a temporary result. Never want to be fooled by that. So I'm always suspicious. Now, what we just did, chances are, is going to hold even tomorrow and next week and so on. We oh. have done something like kick the center out of it, but we don't know that for sure until we test again. And we can only test again in time. And, you know, we have to wait till tomorrow morning, for example, okay? So tomorrow morning, you want to take those sentences and you're going to get a copy of this recording. Right. You want to take those sentences and uh, repeat them again and see what numbers you are. Now, chances are you will still be zero. Chances are, but we don't know that until you do it. Okay. Right. But you may get some other stuff come up. We call them aspects and this kind of thing. Right. All right. Um, you, you may feel different emotions about it. You may get plugged in. I would, I'm going to assume, I'm going to call this a likelihood, that what will start happening is you'll start getting plugged into specific events, memories about father, brother, sister, family issues, and so on, that are irritating to you. Mm -hmm. You'll get memory. And those now point out specific events you can start dealing with. We're not done with this by any means. It, this is a this was a let's get a good start session okay right. but if we have and i think we have done something about kicking the center out of it it's going to make the rest of it go a little little easier it feels like we accomplished that i mean i could feel it i feel a shift in my body do you feel that not in the chest at all this is that's gone that's open now and I keep thinking in terms of testing, I'll have a graduation test on August 8th when I show up at the baby shower in New Jersey. I mean, oh, that's okay. going to test the whole thing. Well, chances are, chances are, um, you will hear some irritating things, some accusations, because other people have not resolved their stuff. All right. No doubt. So here it comes. Here it comes. Now, the real test is going to be your response to it. Are you going to get plugged into it and, you know, come back at it and all that stuff? Are you going to go? <laughs> There's a difference. Right. Right. You know? right. Okay. The other thing that could happen, and again, I'm playing teacher because I know more than one person, other people are going to listen to this. Right. Is I have seen with some frequency where I will deal with a client like you. And other people are involved, like somebody's father, for example, et cetera. And they're not involved in the session we're dealing with, like they weren't here. It's just, mm -hmm. It was just you and me. And, mm -hmm. But they end up, other people end up getting softer. Two great, in our, in our advanced course, we have, I have two, two sessions, two different, I have lots of sessions with people that are recorded. But once with a, a fellow by the name of Gary, who had a vision problem, another fellow named Doug, who had a rejection problem. And both of them had issues with their father, okay? Oh. So we were doing specific events having to deal with their father, similar to what you and I were doing, you know, just you and I, but the, the father was not present in either case. In both of these cases, mm -hmm. the next day, the father calls them, very rare, and starts talking in ways that are very soft and gentle in ways they've never done before. Mm. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. So you may or may not, I don't know, okay, right. notice in the family gathering, other people being a little softer. We'll see. We don't know if that happens, okay? Yeah. But I'm telling, I'm telling you it's a possibility, and keep your antenna out for it. Yeah, I know that can happen. I know that exists. So okay. good to have a heads up on that. All right. Uh, anything more you want to talk about, uh, Kathleen, while we're here? Um, it's just, you know, that part of me that's also watching and learning uh, how you put your arms around, well, let's just get to a core place because there's a lot of pieces of this. Yes. And um, I know I'm not alone in feeling like when you have a client like that where 
you know, there's lots of story, there's lots of pieces, there's pieces in the past, there's stuff in the present, how you um, kind of allowed it to unfold and then got to a place of using statements to, um, to really test and see so that we have a benchmark of what's, where am I resonating in truth? you know, so, so that the unseen therapist it was very helpful for me to, I mean, I'm experiencing it and it'll be helpful for me to watch it because I was mostly experiencing it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, people comment on my ability along those lines, Yeah. Uh, but it isn't really me. Some people think it's me. Okay. I've got experience along the line, but really I'm being guided and I have been guided for some time because I'm listening more and more to unseen therapists. It's one of the things we really need to get to learn how to do is to listen to the guidance that is going on all the time. Mm -hmm. Our egos want to do it their way. Okay. Right. <laughs> and it, it's usually wrong. Okay. It's but if you really, if you really surrender yourself to that and you're really listening to it, it becomes much easier. I, I find myself getting right to what really counts a lot faster than I used to by listening I'm getting notions. You'll say things that things will pop up. Go there, Gary, kind of thing. Okay. More so than they used to. That's, it's just part of a skill you can, anyone can develop. Well, it's, it's, it's really interesting and intriguing because I'm not alone. I'm sure in saying that for those of us practicing EFT or in the beginning of a practice of EFT with, with clients, there's always that nervousness. Am I going to do this right? Okay. What do I do now? What? And so what I'm hearing you say is that as you're working, you're really listening and tuning and it actually makes it a lot more. It's, it's just that it's listening to that unseen therapist working it, and it's working through you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm shutting out. I'm gradually, I'm learning to do learning. That mean, I'm, I'm not done yet. Okay. Yeah. I'm learning. I'm learning to shut out my ego. Right, right. And it's 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 certain where to go here, Gary. So take credit for it. Da 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 da. You know, okay? that kind of stuff. Okay, be the great healer in the sky, Gary. Okay, <laughs> where I let go of that and listen. Listen. It's much softer. It's much easier on the blood pressure. <laughs> okay. That's beautiful. There I, mean, you go. I want to take this opportunity and not to stroke your ego, but to just thank you so much. I mean, to be, <laughs> it's like I was tapping before getting on. I'm going to be talking to Gary, <laughs> you know, but here you are. I mean, being humbled by the actual energy of this work and and to actually for you to say and i'm i'm still learning how to not be in my ego and how to show up and just be there to listen that's a huge gift gary that you you know to hear that oh well i'm i'm glad but i, I don't think i'm alone <laughs> hearing that i mean that's a huge gift and it's a big reminder it, it is a big shift if you knew me but if you knew me years before i started to do any of this you would have seen some guy who was you know the american dream you know right. be somebody achieve and da, 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 get rich right. and have eight cars and right <laughs> if, if i had kept on with that i would have self-destructed a long time ago <laughs> i'm just I guess I'm just saying thank you so much. Okay. I got it. I got it. Feels good. Feels good. All right. Okay. If nothing more, my dear, um, I, I presume I will see you. I will see you at the, um, yes. the, gath the gathering on Saturday. Yes. And uh, I may call on you to give me an update or something. Okay. We'll see what happens. I'll keep you posted. All right. Great. Thank All you right. So Thanks, much. dear. Blessing. Bye-bye.